Good things come to those that wait and spend lots of money. The Prusa Axel has taken a very long time to arrive and it is not an inexpensive printer. In this box, I have the five head version of the Prusa Axel and it is fully assembled. And we're gonna find out if it was worth the wait and worth the investment. We do have a roll of Prusa Mint, a screen power cable here, a USB flash drive, the Wi-Fi antenna, Wi-Fi cable, and then we have the Nextruder V6 nozzle adapter, nozzle wrenches, regular screwdrivers, pliers, all that good stuff. Next, we have XL multi-tool accessories, calibration pin, calibration key. The next thing I see that I was actually pretty excited about is a big container of Haribo gummy bears. There is lots of little boxes kind of nested within the printer right now. And this does give you a sense of the build volume. These boxes appear to be storing the print heads and there should be five of them given that this is a five head Prusa XL. So hopefully there's not a whole lot of assembly required for these guys because that would defeat the purpose in some regard of buying a fully assembled printer. So clearly fully assembled is a little bit of a misnomer. It's a little bit misleading. And the printer is not as heavy as I thought it would be. So it came out of the box pretty easily. The only thing remaining in the box was an extra spring steel sheet. And this is the textured sheet. Next thing I'm seeing inside the build volume is a multicolor test print. And as soon as I removed that spring steel sheet, I am seeing a modular heat bed, which is one of the flagship features of the XL, the ability to heat only the zones that you're actually going to be printing on. So we have a spool holder in the box here. We have the next router here. We have a cable bundle here. Looks like it's sort of a CAN bus system, one wire that plugs in on either end and one PTFE tube. And then we have a sock for the hot end. And now that I'm in the setup guide, I'm seeing that the difficulty is considered moderate and there is 44 steps required. Uh, so I am a little bit disappointed thinking that I'm getting a fully assembled printer, given that I now have quite a bit of work ahead of me to actually get it up and running. So let's go ahead and get that done and then we will see how this thing works. So the first thing we're going to do here is attach the LCD. Next step is going to be to install our first tool head. All right, so we've just attached the first cable bundle and dock for the tool head onto the back frame of the printer. There was one screw that was pre-installed and we just had to stick our Allen key through this rear honeycomb here into the screw to tighten it. And now we are going to have to open our next print head and install the second one. So we've just finished installing the five cable bundles for our five tool Prusa XL. The next step will be to install the Wi-Fi antenna using the parts in this bag. We'll first remove a small plastic cover and the sheet metal electronics box cover. Tool one gets plugged in up above, followed by tool two. We'll route the antenna wire through the opening, then screw the receiver into place. The wire gets connected to the Wi-Fi module on the lower PCB. We'll then connect tools three, four, and five before reinstalling the electronics box cover. We can then install the antenna itself. The next step will be to install the PTFE tubes into the filament runout sensors. We'll then add T-nuts to the extrusions in order to install the spool holders, three on the left side of the printer and two on the right. The spool holder is a telescoping design which allows it to expand in order to accommodate larger spools. Extruders are just held in place by magnets onto the dock. So as soon as we put these pins into these holes, it's gonna get pulled into place. With all of the next extruders docked, the next step was to secure the plastic strain relief to the front of each one. We then go along and connect each bus cable and PTFE tube. All right, so we have just completed the assembly of the Prusa XL. The only thing left to do now is to help ourselves to one of these, plug this in, turn it on, and we will run our very first test print. On initial power up, a firmware update was prompted 
before initiating a self-test followed by a guided calibration. For each tool, we'll need to adjust the position of the dock to ensure proper docking and loading. The first step is to remove the front dock pins. We then loosen the bolts on the side of the dock. Next, manually move the tool changing mechanism and lock it into place by sliding the metal bars. We can then retighten the top bolt. The tool will then be moved out of the way, giving access to the bottom bolt for retightening. At this point, we'll also replace the dock pins. A test sequence will then be initiated in which the tool is repeatedly docked and undocked to ensure proper alignment. This procedure will be repeated for all five tools. The next calibration is for the load cell. Each tool will be picked in sequence and will be asked to tap the nozzle when we hear a chime. Next is a test of the filament sensors. Load filament into each position one by one, pushing it all the way to the tool head. We'll then calibrate the tool offsets. With the spring steel sheet removed, we will install the calibration pin in the center of the bed. Each tool will then probe the pin in sequence, approaching it from all sides. This process takes around 15 minutes for all five tools. When we're done with the calibration pin, we'll stow it away in this convenient little spot. After all that, we're finally ready for our first test print. The Prusa XL 5 head is officially up and running. The overall assembly probably took about an hour and a half with another hour for all of the pre-flight tests and commissioning. In the next video, I will be showing you the same procedure for the two head semi-assembled version. In a future video, I will go into more detail on my experience with this printer and how it performs after I've had more time to evaluate it. So stay tuned for that and make sure you get subscribed so you don't miss it. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy 3D printing. But wait, you never showed us a Benchy. What gives? Well, keen viewer, here you go. My first print, a pre-sliced keychain, looked equally bad. I'm going to reserve my full analysis for a dedicated video, and hope that I can get this sorted in the meantime. But yeah, not what I was expecting.